Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lacey and you are here today for a postnatal yoga sequence. So as always, just make sure that you have medical clearance before starting today's practice. But if you do, if you're feeling healthy, if you're feeling good, then great. Go ahead and get seated on something comfy. So today's practice will be focusing on four main things that will be helpful for your body postpartum. One is posture. The second is opening space around the shoulders and upper back. Third is strengthening the transverse abdominis, and fourth is strengthening the pelvic floor. So as always, just make sure that you are following the wisdom of your body. Make sure if something doesn't sound right, does not work for your body, honor that. Being in this postnatal stage is a stage of repair. It's a stage of honoring your body, of respecting your body for all the work that it has done so far. So come into a seat. Place your hands down onto your now much smaller belly. And so during pregnancy, it's normal for some diastasis recti to occur. So for some separation of the abs to happen. So we'll counter that energetically by just gathering the belly in. So we'll have light pressure on the abs and we'll take a few diaphragmatic breaths. That diaphragmatic breath is the easiest way to start to re-engage the transverse abdominis with deep abdominal muscles. So hands on the belly, take a breath in and let the belly expand, inflate outward, just softly, not forcing anything. And then as you breathe out, you can gather your hands in softly as if you're drawing your abs back together. So that six calf muscle comes back together. So do that again. Inhale, let your belly expand outward. And then as you exhale, you can feel the rectus abdominis, those six pack muscles coming back in together. Close your eyes, keep breathing. Inhale, belly inflates. Exhale, gather it in. Inhale, belly inflates. Exhale, gather it in. Two more breaths like that. See if as you're breathing, you can grow a little taller in your spine. Chest open, shoulders back. Inhale, belly inflates. Exhale, gather in. Inhale, belly inflates. Exhale, gather in. Let that go. Sweep your arms out and around. Take them all the way overhead. And then clasp your hands onto opposite elbows. We'll take a few seated cats and cows with our arms here. As you inhale, let your chest lift forward. Let your gaze lift upward. And then as you exhale, start to round your upper back, take your elbows forward. Inhale, elbows back, heart lifts. Gaze might lift just a little. And then exhale to round back. And take a few more of those at your own pace of breath. Breathing in to open, breathing out to round. Inhaling, heart lifts. And exhaling, let it go. Inhale, back through center, change the clasp of your elbow so the opposite one comes on top. And then take just a few more rounds, arching, rounding the spine. Maybe allowing for some more movement to come in if it feels intuitive, if that feels like what's needed in your body. Maybe just circling the shoulders out a little. Good, and then let that go. Take your fingertips now down onto the tops of your shoulders and trace a few circles with the elbows around. So especially if you are breastfeeding now, the space around the chest, the shoulders, the upper back can become quite tight, as you might know already. So this is just opening up some space here. And then circle the opposite way, taking your arms forward and around, forward and around. Good, you let that go. Crawl your left fingertips out to the left side and then reach your right arm overhead. Gaze underneath your right armpit. So you're lengthening the right side of the chest. And then you can either stay here in stillness if this feels like a really nice stretch, or you can start to take a few O shapes with your upper arm. Drawing the arm around in circles, opening space through the right pectoral muscle. 
and then reverse the direction of that circle, traveling the arm around and forward. Good. Push off your bottom hand to come back through center, and then take it straight around to the opposite side, lengthening out through the left arm, reaching out through the left side body. And then either stay here if that's what you need, or maybe if you circles on that second side, circling down and around, opening up through the heart. Change, go the opposite way, circling, circling, circling. Push off your bottom arm to lift yourself back up through center. Take your hands down to your legs now, and then drop your chin down to your chest. Move your left ear to your left shoulder, and then come back through center. Right ear to your right shoulder, and back through center, and take just a few more of those half circles around with your neck. Neck might also be quite tight if you are breastfeeding, looking downwards. Good. Next time you're back in center, stay there. Lift your chin back upwards. You want your ears to stack right over your collarbone so the neck is long. Crown of the head lifts up to the ceiling. And then from there, we'll crawl out into tabletop, making our way out into all fours. You can ground your wrists down, ground each knuckle pad down, ground down into your shins. And then you could take a few rounds of cat and cow here, just drawing the shoulder blades and finding a gentle lift up through the heart. And then pressing down through your knuckle pads to round the upper back. And then do that a few more times, maybe adding in a little extra movement, maybe a gentle sway of the hips, if that feels nice. And a gentle press up of the shoulders side to side, just feeling Free to get a little bit creative here, noticing what your body needs in this moment. And again, honoring that, honoring all the hard work it has done, all the hard work it will continue to do. Good, come back into a neutral spine, and we'll take a modified bird dog to start, and then you'll have the option to move into the full version. So before coming into bird dog, just zip your belly button up and in. You can even take your hand down to your navel and make sure this area is flat. So you don't want the center of your abs hanging down like a loaf of bread. You want everything to be hugged into center. Belly button drawing up and in. And you want to keep that engagement as you extend your right leg back behind you. Just keep the toes tucked underneath you to start. Now lengthen your left hand arm forward, calling the fingertips out, and you might stay right here. Look down your body, see if you can see the belly drawing up and in, see if you can feel it drawing up and in. So again, everything in this space is nice and flat. And then again, you might stay here or you might lift the leg up, you might lift the arm up. Good, and then tap the fingertips, tap the toes back down and then lift it back up. Make sure you're still hugging your belly up and in. Lower down. And then lift up. Two more like that, lower down. Lift up. And lower down. And lift up. Hold here this time. See if you can point your toes straight back behind you. So tips of the toes go back. Fingertips lengthen forward. And then notice what's happening with your neck, if anything funky is happening, just gaze down to the mat. Good, lower the fingertips, lower the toes. Replace your left hand back to where you started, so right down underneath your left shoulder, right knee grounds underneath your right hip. And we'll repeat that to the second side. So before lengthening forward and backward, draw the navel up and engage the core, and then curl your right fingertips forward. Tuck your left toes under, draw them backwards. Hug your belly up and in. Notice, is everything engaged? Look down, make sure that it is. Maybe stay right here, or maybe lift the arm, and then lift the leg. 
and then tap the fingers and toes back down and then lift up once again and then tap and lower and lift it up tap and lower lift it up two more tap lower lift it up tap it down and lower lift it up stay here this time zip your belly up and down lengthen out through the fingertips that are lifted lengthen back through the toes pointing them backwards gaze down and then lower the hands lower the toes lower the knee take a cat and cow moving with your breath inhaling to draw the shoulder blades in softly drawing the belly downwards so not over stretching the abs and then exhaling to round and then inhaling, shoulder blades hug in. Exhale it around. Come back through center and then drop your forearms down to the mat. We'll come into a modified sphinx pose here. So spread through each of your fingers and then let your belly soften down to the mat as if you're coming back into cow pose. Shoulder blades can draw back forwards. You can gaze forward of you. So sphinx that's typically taken down on the belly and you're welcome to come down onto the belly if that feels good in your body. But after nine months of growing a baby in your belly, it might not feel great to come down onto the belly quite yet. So just follow the wisdom of your body. So if wherever you are, whether you're on your belly or on your forearms, let your heart move forward. Let your collarbones spread open. Let your shoulder blades hug in. And then from here, zip your belly up and in again. Draw your knees an inch or so back in space and then draw your hips in line with your shoulders. So coming into a modified forearm plane. So knees are still rounded, tops of the feet are still rounded. If this feels like it's too much for the belly or if you're getting that little loaf of bread hanging out in your belly. So if the belly is doming downward, you can always take your hips back an inch or so. Otherwise, stay here. Breathe in. And out. One more time, breathe in. And out, let it go. Come into a child's pose, drawing the knees out. Let your hips settle down to your heels. Let your forehead rest down. Maybe rocking the brow line out side to side, breathing in and out here. And good, and then come into down dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up to the ceiling. Feet down to about hips width apart. So during pregnancy, we're taking them a little wider mat width. So if that still feels good in your body, by all means, take it. But if you feel like you're ready to walk the feet in a little closer, hips width apart is the traditional alignment. Round down to each of your knuckle pads. Maybe pedal your knees out. Maybe shift your shoulders a little bit side to side. Good. Gaze forward to your fingers. Draw your belly in as you start to hip toe your feet forward to the front of the mat, coming into a forward fold. Once you're there, bend your knees a touch. Draw your hands onto opposite elbows, taking a ragdoll, and take a soft sway from side to side. Change the clasp of your elbows. Give your upper body another sway side to side. Keep your knees soft as you roll up to standing one vertebra at a time. Once you're lifted, once you're upright, take your elbows all the way overhead and circle them out and around one direction. Making space across the heart, across the shoulders, across the upper back. Change the cross of your elbows, circle around a few more times, the opposite way. Good, and release your hands down, take them straight up to the ceiling, and then from there, keep your arms extended as you circle yourself around. Doesn't matter what direction, we'll go both ways. So keeping the lower body stable, just circle the upper body around a few times. And then change direction, circle, circle, circle the opposite way. Just bring some movement into the chest once again. Good. 
Good. Come back through center and then draw your arms alongside your body. Coming into mountain pose. Take your hands down onto your hips. Notice where your pelvis is in space. During pregnancy, there was a tendency to tuck the tailbone, or not to tuck, but to arch the low back. So to draw the pelvis, the pelvis back behind you as if your pelvis were a water basin and you're spilling that basin forward. So instead of doing that, now try tucking your tailbone under so the low back becomes long, pubic bone comes up to the spine. Now you don't necessarily want this either. You might have this especially if you're carrying your baby around. Do something neutral in between that tilt and that tuck. Right in between, finding your happy medium. Draw your arms alongside you and push your shoulder blades in, drawing the collarbones out a little wider. Lift up through the crown of your head. And then you can imagine now holding baby here. So you want to keep this nice lift to the chest, this nice length through the spine, even if you have baby in your arms. Stay with this nice long spine, just walk yourself back to the back of your mat. And imagine you're setting your baby down. So take your feet a little bit wider. I'll show you what not to do first. So what not to do is this. Using your back to lower the baby down. Instead, we'll come down through a squat. So if anything is going on with the pelvic floor, if, if you tore and it's not repaired, and if you are experiencing a lot of pain here, you might not want to squat quite yet. But if you're at a stage where it feels good, then widen your feet apart, draw your toes out slightly, maybe feel slightly in, take your baby with you, keep your spine long as you start to bend your knees down, 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 down. It's a nice soft landing for your baby down to your mat. Crawl yourself back out into tabletop, taking your hands, your knees down onto the earth. And then from here, Come down onto your right side. So you can lengthen your legs out or you can have a bend in your knees. It doesn't really matter. Just whatever feels most stable, feels best in your body. Lengthening the legs out will be a little more of a challenge for the core. So just notice what feels right today. Lengthen your spine out. So you still want to think about that nice long posture. You're just kind of in a side bend now. Take your top hand, your left one down to your belly. Make sure that everything is flat and hugging in. And then we'll just take a few rounds of diaphragmatic breath here. So as you inhale, expand the belly. And as you exhale, feel the belly hugging back in. Inhale, expand the belly. Exhale, feel the belly hugging back in. So this is, again, engaging the transverse abdominis. It's doing it a little more on the right side than the left side. Take a few more rounds of breath on your own, maybe closing your eyes. I'm watching that movement. One last round. Inhale to expand. And exhale, soften it. Okay. Let that go. And before flipping straight around to the second side, just draw your top arm over your ear, taking a nice long lengthening through the left side body. You can either stay here or you can ground through your right hand Maybe lift the elbow off the ground. And then lower down to hover. Lengthen your left arm out to the left side. Push it away as you press off of the right hand, lifting the elbow up. And then draw the arm back in. Bend the elbow again. Do that a few more times, engaging through the, the right tricep. Push it away as you lift up. And then come back in. Push it away as you lift up. And come back in. Two more. Push and lift. Lower down. Push and lift. And then lower your elbow all the way down. Just circle out that top arm a few times. Change with the opposite way. And then flip yourself around to your second side. So, coming down onto your left forearm now. Either lengthen your legs out or have that soft bend through your knees. Take your right hand now onto your belly. Start by making sure everything is flat, everything is hugging in, everything is engaged to start. And then 
expand the belly out as you breathe in, finding that diaphragmatic breath. And as you exhale, feel the belly hugging back in. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, it hugs in. Take a few more, maybe closing the eyes, maybe breathing on your own. Last one, breathe and expand it. And breathe out. Good, draw your right arm overhead, lengthening out through the right side, lengthening out through the right fingertips. You might press into your left hand and lift the elbow off the ground, engaging just a little bit through that bottom tricep. Now lower the arm back down, you can draw your right arm back in, and then push away as you lift up. And then draw it back in, and then push away, and then draw it back in, push to lift, one more draw it back in, push to lift, lower slowly all the way back down, circle out, I'm getting hair in my mouth, circle out your top arm, opening through that top side of the chest, and move the opposite way. Good. From here, we'll come all the way down onto our backs. So you're already in a good position to start. Just bend your knees if you're not there already. And then use the strength of your arms to walk yourself all the way down. Roll onto your back from here. Bend both of your knees. Soles of the feet can touch down onto the ground. You can feel your heels ground down into the earth. So creating a little bit of energy, a little bit of engagement. Now draw your hands back down to your belly. And we'll do something similar to what we started with, just that diaphragmatic breath with that gathering of the abdominals in. So as you breathe in, let the belly expand upward, outward, around. As you exhale, feel the belly draw back into the earth, and then feel your fingertips draw the abdominal muscles inward. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, draw in. Now keep going with that, but this time make sure that you are also engaging the pelvic floor. So you want to think about hugging a marble up and into your pelvic floor each time that you breathe out. So as you inhale, that marble moves away, and as you exhale, that marble draws back up and in, following your breath with this. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, gather everything. Inhale, expand. Exhale, gather back in. Now, one more layer to add to this. If you'd like, you can vocalize a little, maybe adding a shush breath. So that shush will naturally engage the pelvic floor and will engage the transverse abdominis. So as you inhale, expand. Exhale, shush. Engaging the pelvic floor, drawing everything in. Inhale, expand. Exhale. Shh. Last time, inhale, expand. Exhale. Shh. Good. Now, you can keep your hands down to your belly if that feels supportive. At least have one hand here just to make sure that everything is staying flat so you're not doming the belly upwards. And then just start to move the right leg out to the right side. And exhale as you draw it back up and in. So breathing diaphragmatically, inhale, belly expands as you draw the right leg out. Exhale, draw it back in. Two more like this, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Move to the second side. Inhale, belly expands and you draw it out. Exhale, draw it back in. Inhale, out. And exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. 
exhale. Good, now you can stick with that or what is a little more engagement for the core, for the transverse abdominis, is to now extend the right leg straight out in front of you. Good, and then on your inhale, draw the leg back in. Exhale to extend. Inhale, draw back in, belly expands. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Last time here, exhale. Inhale. Stamp your right foot back down, and then as you exhale this time, extend the left leg forward. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Now as you're doing this, you just want to make sure your low back is flat down onto the mat so you're not lifting it up, up, you're not finding an arch with it. Take just a few more, exhaling to extend. Inhale and draw in. Exhaling, extend. Inhale in. Good. Lower the foot down. This time, if you can do this with, while keeping the belly hugging and while keeping everything flat, and lift your left leg and then your right leg. So both feet are lifted off the ground. Point both of your toes. And again, you want to keep the core flat. You want to keep your low back flat on the mat. So you might be staying here if that's required, if this is necessary to keep those things, to keep the belly flat, to keep the low back down. Otherwise, you might start to just gently tap your right toe down and then switch tap the left. And then switch tap down and then switch tap down. And then just keep going. You don't have to be on your breath with this one. You can just keep switching, switching, switching the legs. Finding a pace that is comfortable for you in this moment. Now all of these abdominal exercises I just showed you, again, you wanna make sure everything is drawing in. Belly flat, low back flat. If you're doing these correctly, they should help to heal diastasis, diastasis recti if you have it. Or they should help to strengthen, even if you don't have diastasis recti, so they should help to strengthen the transverse abdominis. So just a few more here. Good. And then let that go. Tap both feet back down. Ground your heels down onto the mat. And take a few tilts of your pelvis here. So just as we did standing, Draw your sit bones down into the earth, finding now a little bit of an arch, a little bit of a lift in the low back. And then tuck your tailbone underneath you, pubic bone up towards your navel, low back draws down into the mat. And then tilt your sit bones down, and then tuck underneath you. You can have your hands to your hips here, that helps to find the movement. Tuck and round, tuck and round. Take a few more of these, tucking and arching the spine. Now this time, keep your tailbone tucked under. So drawing your sits bones down and slightly up to the ceiling. Pubic bone up to your navel, belly can hug inwards. Keep this tuck of the tailbone underneath you and then lift your hips another inch or so. So really starting to turn on the glutes. You can extend your arms now, maybe face them down into the mat. So we're not doing a yoga bridge, we're not arching the spine, we're not, or we're not drawing the shoulders in, the focus isn't on the upper back quite yet. We're just focusing on the lower body. Press down through your hands. Tuck your tailbone just another inch or two if that feels okay for your low back. And notice if that engages the glutes a little more. Good. And then lower yourself back down. Tilt your tailbone down, lifting the upper back. And then tuck it back under. Lift your tailbone off the mat. Finding that gentle lift, that gentle glute bridge here. Ground your palms down, and then this time, as we're here and lifted, draw your pelvic floor muscles up and in. Find that gentle lift up and inward. Finding that gentle engagement. And lower back down. Tilt your sits bones down, arch the back just a touch if that feels okay for the spine, and then tuck your tailbone under. 
scoop your sits bones, scoop your tailbone off the earth, finding that, still finding that tuck of the tailbone under as you find this lift. This time as you're lifted, you can either take one of those engagements of the pelvic floor, or you can start to draw the pelvic floor in and in and in and in. So just imagining squeezing that marble in a little faster, working on more of those fast twitch muscles. Squeeze in and in and in. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower all the way down. Good. And then this final time, we'll take a traditional yoga bridge here. So rather than tucking the tailbone under this time or tilting the sits bones back and down, find a neutral spine. Press down through your hands, press down through your feet, and then roll your spine up one vertebra at a time. Now here you don't want to be tucked under. You want the spine more in neutral, pelvis more in neutral. You can reach onto the edges of the mat, or maybe you just shrug your shoulder blades under and reach for an interlace underneath you if that feels okay for your spine. Really hugging the shoulder blades underneath you if that feels good. Drawing your sternum up towards your chin. Good, release your hands, and then roll your spine down to that one vertebra at a time. Slowly, slowly start to draw your knees into your body. Maybe take them a little wide, maybe more to your armpits, distance apart. And then rock yourself from side to side. Breathing in and down to your belly. Breathing in to sensation. Round your right foot down. Extend your left leg all the way up to the ceiling, maybe taking your hands to interlace around the back of the thigh, and maybe crawling them up to the calf if that feels so stable in your body. Just take a few breaths here. Re bend the knee, set the sole of the foot down, trade legs, draw your right knee in. Take your hands behind the back of the thigh to start, extend the leg up. Maybe slide the hands a little higher, maybe up to the back of the calf. Three, bend the knee. Set the sole of the foot down. Then slide both legs all the way out to the front of the mat. Draw your arms alongside your body, palms can face upward, feet can flop out to the sides. Shoulder blades can draw in and down so that the collarbones widen. Let your gaze soften and then let your eyes close. Take a breath in and down to your belly. Let it out through your lips. One more time, in and down to your belly. And out through your lips. And then rest right here in Shavasana.
going to ease your way out of this rest. Inviting small movements back into your fingers, into your toes. Maybe lengthening your arms back behind you. Drawing yourself into a full body stretch. Bend both of your knees. Rock onto your left side. Pause there for a moment. And then take your hands down onto the mat to lift yourself all the way up to see it. Coming into a nice tall spine, finding that lift through the crown of your head, finding that opening across your heart. Sweep your arms up and overhead. And then draw your hands into the center of your heart. Bow your chin down to your chest. Take a moment of gratitude to your body for all of the wonderful things that it does, that it has done, that it will continue to do. A lot of gratitude for carving out this space in your busy day to practice self-care. I thank you all for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day.